Hello and welcome on Watches TV and after a short but productive summer break, uh, here we are with the August edition of Primetime, a rather short one with some quick updates and I can already tell you that we will be pretty busy next week with our coverage of the Geneva Watch Days plus the fact that we are going to announce something really huge during the show, something I've been working on for years which is now seriously taking shape. So this announcement will be made on the 30th of August, it will be aired live on our Instagram 10 o'clock Central uh, European time and really can't wait to share this with you. We're talking a really meaningful and ambitious endeavor, something incredibly motivating for me and my team, but it goes way beyond this. Well, just uh, by hearing its name uh, should give you a pretty good hint, Horopedia, as simple as that. And for those who want to stay informed by this, well, I clearly invite you to go on the website horopedia.org and subscribe to the newsletter, which will give you further information as we go along. So let's talk uh, watchmaking in the news and the biggest show of the coming days uh, with the third edition of the Geneva Watch Days, an event uh, started in 2020 which was created by a committee of brand as an answer to the fact that major Swiss uh, watch shows had all been cancelled due to the pandemic and it gained uh, quite some popularity along the way. So I don't know if you uh, remember, but last year to celebrate our 10th anniversary, we had invited a few of you guys to participate and I think everybody had some pretty good time. So it is uh, no doubt a very interesting show where brands uh, can present uh, new editions of their watches before the winter season and all the holidays. And it also attracts a lot of uh, collectors and parties are not bad either, but that's on a side note. So this year, the Geneva Watch Days uh, will host 33 brands and there will be a series of talks held in the pavilion moderated by our friend Waco, industry specialist and founder of Revolution and Rake. And the first half of the day, on August the 29th is reserved solely for the press and brands and after launch the program will be open to the general public. Here I have to uh, take note that the general public can come to the pavilion uh, situated right in front of the Beau Rivage Hotel with a fantastic view of the jet d'eau uh, during the daytime and visit some uh, showrooms if registered at the website and the link will be uh, placed under this video. So you can also participate in three public events of the week. On August the 30th uh, there will be a debate on the rise of independent watch brands. On the 31st you will have a chance to meet uh, with a very inspiring Bulgari designer Fabrice your Buono Massa during the event devoted to the iconization of timepieces and on the 1st of September the discussion will focus on the next generation of watchmakers. So yes, Geneva Watch Days as a forum is quite uh, democratic, easygoing and fun and welcomes everyone from visitors who are simply curious about the watch industry to seasons collectors. But uh, we've been hearing some discussion lately about the future of this event uh, since this year most brands were able to host shows either at Watches and Wonders or other venues. So the big question is if this event is still relevant for brands. But we certainly hope so and this year edition could be quite pivotal as it nevertheless involves costs for the participating brands. So then again it is pretty complicated to host thousands of visitors in the pavilion or in the Beau Rivage or adjacent hotels so by definition there is a limit to what is possible to do in terms of hosting large crowds. And if we are talking about numbers well things are going quite smoothly there too. Last year we had 350 retailers and more than 300 journalists attending uh, the, these watch days and I'm pretty sure we will surpass this. But beyond brands you will have a watchmaking atelier for those who want to test some assembly skills uh, with Initium. Plus uh, Philips uh, will also take the opportunity to present in the pavilion a number of delicacies from its, from its coming November auction with for instance the recently announced spectacular selection of George Daniels timepieces including the one Mr. Daniel wore on a daily basis and as a reminder last year we had four one-of-a-kind timepieces by Philippe Dufour and it's not every day that you can see this with your very own eyes. Other presentation by brands will be quite exciting of course, always nicer to hold watches in the flesh compared to getting some press releases but count on us to, uh, for, to cover this event as if you were there. And regarding the future of shows, well, we haven't yet heard anything new regarding what will happen in the spring of next year and the evolution of watches and wonders. But as time is ticking, I guess we should have some news pretty soon. And I just hope that they will announce some kind of uh, opening of the show, make it uh, larger and more inclusive. But we'll see, and I say this as we just learned that the Geneva Motor Show has again been canceled for next year 
And it wouldn't hurt these big Geneva infrastructures to have something pretty large to compensate for this. Well, what I mean is that I'm pretty certain that there is more political pressure to host something not only bigger, but certainly more open to the public. And I guess that we'll all benefit from this. And I doubt uh, that the Geneva watch days can ever replace this. Though I like the concept uh, being more casual and also quite inspiring. So since uh, we will talk extensively in the coming days about all the, these new watches seen here in Geneva, well, I just wanted to uh, quickly talk about only one new timepiece from one of the most, uh, well, really sought after micro brands in the market. And we are talking about uh, France-based Baltic watches who this time came up with a new special edition, the Tricompax Baltic in collaboration with Peter Otto. This is an interesting timepiece uh, which has some resemblance uh, to another well-known wristwatch that a while ago well kind of fetched uh, pretty large uh, amounts uh, and records at some auctions. And uh, well this watch was designed in partnership uh, with Peter Otto like I mentioned, organizer of the holy grail for any motor racing enthusiast regarding historic uh, racing cars competitions including Le Mans Classic, the D1000 Tour du Castellet, Spa Classics and others. But let's go back to the watch. It is the first uh, three counter chronograph of Baltic uh, that was undeniably inspired by the golden age of motor racing and despite its uh, classic looks uh, this tricompax has a modern touch in it which opens an important chapter for the brand. So for this watch they took the Celita SW510M a hand wound uh, mechanical movement with 63 hours of power reserve and the design of uh, the tricompax is very appealing I think with this uh, tachymeter scale bezel which can measure speeds up to 200 kilometers and the light uh, beige dial has a matte finish and the hands are of course coated with super luminova and the yellow and orange colors used for the small hands remind us of racing cars. The steel case is water resistant and there are two types of strap uh, as well. One is a brushed steel flat link supplied with a specific screwdriver for adjustment and another one is a leather strap. And the best part, yes there is a best part, is the content of the box because with this uh, special edition the watch comes with a nice little bonus with two additional flyback uh, stopwatches and I think it's uh, rather cool and clearly shows a union between motor racing and watchmaking. So these two stopwatches are set on an anodized aluminum plate and you can easily integrate them into a dashboard of your own car or your desk maybe it could be easier. So now I need to add that there are only 300 units of this special edition uh, which will be made available online on Baltic-watches.com and the price is quite sweet for these uh, hand assembled timepieces so I guess these will be gone uh, quite rapidly. Okay, and to finish up this uh, quite short pride time, like I mentioned, just wanted to add that on the 24th and 25th of September in New York will be held a new edition of the Horology Forum organized by the meaningful Dubai Watch Week people. And it also uh, open to the public, you just need to register. And it seems the registration process is not yet fully implemented, but I clearly invite you to check the Dubai Watch Week website for further info. And this time really to finish on a nice little note and sometimes well we do get spoiled so the other day well we received this by the mail accompanied uh, by a really nice letter and basically it's a young german company uh, based in munich called the watch pillar who manufactures these old wooden stands and they personalized it for us i mean how cool is that well if you want to know more i invite you again to check their website watchpillar.com and thanks again for this really nice treat. I mean, highly appreciate it. So yes, a rather short uh, edition of Primetime and we can't wait for next week for multiple reasons and just repeating myself slightly, we will air on our Instagram account the live of this press conference on the 30th at 10 o'clock uh, uh, Central Eastern European time. Uh, regarding the, I mean, the official launch of Horopedia, so crazily uh, exciting and don't hesitate to subscribe to the newsletter to be the first ones in the know on the landing page of horopedia.org. The very best to you, thanks for watching, viva watchmaking and see you real soon.